Hello, Dr. Sisse covering anatomy and physiology. Today, I will be covering the skeletal system and the muscular system. The muscular system includes only the skeletal muscle, not the cardiac muscle, not the smooth muscle. It is the only muscle we can control. It's called the voluntary, okay? If you look at the picture on the left and right, you see the skeletal system on the left. By now, you should know the name of all the 206 bones in adult. And on the right, you see all the muscle that covers those bones. They're attached to the bone. The reason why the skeletal muscle is called skeletal, because it's the muscle that is attached to bones, right? So on the left, you see all the bones we talked about before, the frontal bone, the nasal, the zygomatic, the mandible, the temporal, the parietal. On the right, you see them covered by the muscles that will bear almost the same name. The frontal bone is covered by the frontalis. Occipital bone, occipitalis. Temporal bone, temporalis. Nasal, nasalis. Zygomatic, zygomaticus. Now the mandible, which is the mental region, mentalis. So you see a lot of muscles here. So even, for example, the tibia, tibialis anterior or tibialis posterior. What other name? And then the brachial region, you will see, for example, back say brachii, you know, or brachialis or brachioradialis because the radius is here. So you will see also the abdominal region, you know, the rectus abdominis, you know, the abdominis oblique muscle or in the costal, for example, the, the ribs are called costal region, right? The intercostal muscle. So you will see a lot of names that will sound like the bone because it is attached to the bone. Okay, so let's talk about the question we're going to be answering this. Why do children have more than uh, more bone than adults? What is the difference between a sinus and a foramen? What is the difference? You can pause the video here and read these questions. These are the questions we're going to be answering today. Now let's look at the bone and the muscle of the head. Like I said, you see on the right, the temporalis frontalis, and then you see a muscle on the right is called corrugator supercilia. The corrugator supercilia is the muscle like on the forehead here, next to your eye, that can make you frown like this, right? Then around the orbit, you see the orbicularis, orbicularis orbit, a circle, aculi around the eye, or orbicularis oris around the mouth. Remember the oral cavity, oris. Then the bone that's attached to the zygomatic bone, there are two muscles here, the muscles that are attached to the zygomatic bone. The top one is the zygomatic minor, and the bottom one, the inferior one, is zygomatic major, so zygomatic. And then the chewing muscle, the masseter, remember the mass eater, masseter. Then here you see also the, um, the muscles on the cheek, like the buccal region, the buccinator. You call buccinator. That's going to be this muscle. <laughs> and then you see the depressor uh, muscle. So we got the depressor anguli oris here. Let me show you right here. So the depressor anguli because it's the angle oris because it's oral. And then the uh, you see a muscle here called the rhizoris. It's cut here. The rhizoris is a rhizoris muscle is the one that makes you smile. Rhizoris. I'm using it right now. Rhizoris muscle. What other muscle do you see here? The orbicularis oris, we said it already. The nasalis, covering the nose. And then the occipitalis, covering the occipital bone, the temporalis. Now, you see that um, the, the, the frontalis muscle and the occipitalis are connected by a tendon sheath called the galea aponeurotica. What does that mean? It means aponeurosis is a connective tissue that connects two muscles. Remember, muscle, muscle is called aponeurosis. Muscle to bone is called a tendon, and bone to bone is called a ligament. So you see all the bones in left, at the left and the right. Next, we have the medial here. What is the difference between a sinus and a foramen? A sinus is the air-filled space in the bone. It means there's empty spaces in your bone they have nothing in there, right? So they just have a, 
epithelial tissue inside of them. So air can come. Why do you need a sinus? Because if you had bones all over, like a thick bone on your head, it'll be too heavy for your neck to hold it up. So it's like a space that makes your head light. So a sinus is an empty space filled with air. And the foramen is the hole through which something goes and that has an end. And then a canal is like a long hole. It's something that will be like a, like a tube type of thing, tube. So that's why we have external acoustic uh, um, uh, meatus. Here we have a meatus. Meatus means a canal that has no end. So we have, for example, a hypoglossal canal, right? It's a canal, it's a hole. And the suture is just a connection between two flat bones. Here we see, for example, the coronal suture, the squamous suture, the lambdoid suture, uh, and the... Um, Per, uh, the sagittal suture, which is connecting the two parietal bones. Okay, so the cranial and facial bones and the muscle of facial expression. Here also I'm showing the same muscles on uh, forward now, the interior view of the face. You see the frontalis, the orbicularis oculi, the nasalis. Now, here you also see the levator anguli oris. Levator means elevating, going up. Anguli means the angle of your mouth, and oris is oral. So the levator is the muscle that elevates the angle of your mouth. You're just going like this, like a smiling up. And then, of course, you see the levator labii superioris. Levator means to elevate. Labia means your lift. Superioris means the top. So we see also the zygomatic major and minor. And we see also the depressor anguli oris. The depressor means depressing, going down. Angular means the angle or is your oral. It makes, it's like a frown muscle going like this. Okay? And then the depressor labii inferioris, the word labii just means your lip. It means depressing your lip, like going this way, depressing your lip. And then you see the muscle covering the front part of your neck called the platysma. Remember? Platysma. So we know the difference. What is the sinus again? The air fills space in the bone. Here we see the temporal bone. We talk about the temporal. And the temporal bone here, you recognize the mastoid process here, the zygomatic process, the mastoid part, the squamous suture and the squamous part, and the styloid process. You see the mastoid process and the styloid process. Styloid process. And then you see here your ear hole called the external acoustic meatus. Then when you look at the muscle, the temporal bone is covered by the temporalis. And then you see, for example, the muscle of the chewing here, the masseter, the mass eater, masseter, and then the bucinator, the bucinator buccal, and the orbicularis oris. Here we recognize the mandible. Now we talk about the difference between the process, right? And a, um, uh, the process, uh, we said the difference between, one of the questions asked you about process, uh, between the process or something else, I don't remember. But let's talk about it here. The process is just the extension of the bone. You see the candular process here and the coronoid process of the mandible and the mandibular notch. You see the mandibular foramen inside and the mental foramen outside of the mandible. And the alveolar process is the space where you have the tooth in. It's the tooth socket of the bone. Now the mandible have an angle, the body, the front part, the ramus, which is the branch here, the candular process, right? The candular process of the mandibular condyle is the process that go into the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. So the temporal bone has the mandibular fossa because the mandible goes inside of it. And then the coronoid process goes under the zygomatic bone. Here we see the hyoid bone. It's the bone along on the, in the neck. And one thing here, you see the stylohyoid muscle. It is the muscle that connects the styloid to the hyoid the styloid hyoid muscle. Then here, if you compare the mandible to the muscle of the tongue and pharynx, you see now that the muscle of the tongue and pharynx is actually on your mandible. You see here, if you hear the, the word OMO on the name of the muscle, it means the muscle is attached to your scapula. The word glosso means it is related to your tongue and genio to your chin. Example, genio hyoid it is the muscle that's connected to your chin to your hyoid bone. Mylohyoid is 
the muscle that connect myelo just means the molar, like your tooth area to the hyoid. So it goes from your tooth to your hyoid. Genio glasses, since genio means chin, glasses mean tongue, from your chin to your tongue. So every muscle here will kind of make sense. You can stop the video and watch this because I don't want to pass 12 minutes. That, of course, you see a stylohyoid, malohyoid, thyrohyoid, omohyoid, sternohyoid, and then the scalene muscle, we talk about it to the neck, right? We said the scalene cover your neck to your vertebrae. And digastric muscle is the muscle that allow you to open your mouth. And then the muscle acting on the back, we got the neck flexor. We have the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this hard muscle, and the scalene. And the next extension to kind of lift your head, we got the trapezius, the splenis capitis, and the semispinalis. Okay? So let me go back to the question because I don't want to pass 12 minutes. Let me go the question very quick. Why do children have more bones than adults do? Because when you get older, your bone will fuse. We have about 270 bones that fuse to become small. What is the difference between a sinus and a foramen? A sinus is an air-filled space in your bone, and the form is a hole through which something goes. What's the different difference between a candle and a process? A candle means something that goes against another bone to articulate. A process is the extension of the bone. Alveolus and alveolar process. Alveolus is just an area on which there is tooth. So your mandible and maxilla will be alveolar process. The difference between a sutural bone and sesamoid bone. Sutural bones are little tiny bones like a grind, very small, like sometimes like a sand, between flat bone. But sesamoid bone or bone that grow, little tiny bone, for example, your patella is a sesamoid. It's a bone that grows between bones that have a lot of pressure. Because you sit on your knee a lot, you have a lot of pressure, so you have sesamoid bone. So it's uh, formed by the parietal bone. The parietal bone is going to be formed what? Sagittal, squamous, coronal, and lambdoid. The difference between canal and fissure, canal will be something long, fissure will be like a slit. Think that a frontal bone and mandible. Frontal bone and mandible are, are two bones for babies. They get fused when they grow up. The mastoid process is located on the temporal bone. Between the spinous process. On the spinous process on the uh, th thoracic and the lumbar, the thoracic, the spinous process kind of going for downward, inferiorly. On the lumbar, the spinous process are straight. Body get, let the vertebrae get larger because the body, because it takes more weight and the spinal cord gets smaller. The mandibular fossa is located on the temporal bone. All right, I hope we cover everything and I'll see you in class. Thank you very much.